Hey everyone, this is Nick and today we're gonna talk about Nextcloud again. Because, okay, it always was a fantastic alternative to proprietary ecosystems like Apple's or Google's, but it still lacked a few interesting things that other proprietary platforms did. And fortunately, Nextcloud Hub 3, the latest version, fixes most, if not all, of these issues and now Nextcloud is a perfect replacement to Apple's ecosystem or to most of Google's services. So let's take a look at what is new, at why you should ditch your privacy invasive current ecosystem and also at this segue to today's sponsor. This video is sponsored by Tuxcare and if you run CentOS machines you might be starting to panic about the fast approaching end of life of CentOS 7. Well, you don't have to worry anymore because thanks to Tuxcare you can still get four years of free software updates and security patches for CentOS when you purchase a Kernel Care Enterprise subscription. So not only do you get live patching for these servers to stay secure and up to date without any downtime or reboots or maintenance windows to plan around, but you can also keep your current operating system so you have more time to plan your upgrade path. Check out Kernel Care Enterprise and get your free extended support for CentOS 7 by clicking the link in the description below. Okay, really quickly, under one minute, let's take a look at what Nextcloud is for people who don't know about it. Nextcloud is an open source cloud solution. You can either host it yourself on a virtual private server or at home on any small NUC or Raspberry Pi, or you can find a provider online that will give you an account. It's a replacement for the cloud services Apple can give you or for most of Google's services, and it's obviously private, secure, and you can extend it with a lot of apps that let you manage your tasks, calendars, contacts, emails, chat. You can use it for your photo albums to get a Kanban board, an integrated office suite, taking notes, manage your RSS feed, track your phone's position, listen to podcasts, basically anything you want. It's also fantastic for managing a team with strong collaboration features for instant messaging, audio and video calls, and more. And all that data can also be accessed through mobile apps for iOS and Android, sync through CardDAV and CardDAV, and there's a desktop app to auto-sync files as well. Whew, almost, and that's a lot of stuff, and most of these features I actually use every day to handle my YouTube channel. And with the latest updates, Nextcloud Hub 3, everything got way better. So first, Nextcloud always looked a bit Spartan, and not in the muscled, bearded, cool guy kind of way, more in the super boring and uninspired design kind of way. Now with the latest updates, you now get a lot more personalization options. The whole interface for Nextcloud and its apps has received a fresh coat of paint. You can choose a wallpaper that will permeate behind the interface, and you can color it with some transparency and blur. Corners are rounded and have a nicer and friendlier feel. You can also decide to go dark mode and light mode with an automatic switch depending on your system, something you could not do before. It was either all light or all dark and you had to switch manually. Auto dark mode is a must have feature for any website or web app, or so I'm told by dark mode fans. I'm more of a light theme kind of guy, but don't tell anyone. This revamp isn't critical to how you use Nextcloud, but it's still welcome as most proprietary alternatives have quite comfy and well-designed user experiences. Apple is even revamping its iCloud online services in beta to improve them. Now, since the web interface can be your main way to access your Nextcloud applications, it's good to see that they're focusing on making it look as good as the competition. Of course, looks can only take you so far, and I know that because I peaked in my mid-20s and it's only been going downhill since then. Now, the second main issue with Nextcloud was performance. It wasn't super slow, but it wasn't lightning fast either, especially in the unified search. Now, this feature on paper is awesome. It lets you search for anything in any Nextcloud app you have. But the more apps and data you had, the slower it got, taking multiple seconds or more to return a single result. With Nextcloud Hub 3, everything is way faster, from switching to another app to search. The load for some operations has been reduced by up to 90%. Search is at least 20% faster and application loading times have been reduced by 30%. The difference is night and day on my server since I got the update. Those are really incredible changes that make using the web interface actually usable now, 
And it also means that your next cloud server doesn't need to be powerful to work well, which is nice. Something most people do on their cloud storage is photo storage. Like if you're using an iPhone or an Android phone, chances are your dick, your dear pics are on someone else's computer. And Nextcloud was always super lackluster in the picture organization department. It had basically nothing. And that's all fixed in what must be the biggest change to Nextcloud ever. Photos now have a whole new tile view that not only looks better, but is way faster as well. And it lets you scroll through your photos quickly and smoothly. You also get the ability to create photo albums, finally. And a photo can be in multiple albums and you can share these with others through a public link so anyone can look at them or download them without needing a Nextcloud account on your server. You also get a brand new photo editor with filters, cropping, drawing, brightness, contrast, blur, image warmth control, resizing and more. But what is more useful is AI powered features for your photo library and done right, as in everything runs locally on your server. No data goes to anyone else, contrary to what Google or Apple does. And it's optional as well. You will need to install the Recognize app from the Nextcloud App Store to make it work. Now this app will automatically tag your photos, recognize faces, objects, landmarks, pets, and even audio genres for your music. And you can find all the people it identified in a dedicated tab to add their names. It has its own settings to let you turn specific tagging on and off, and there are easy one-click buttons to reset all tagging. The photo experience is now absolutely fantastic, and it basically has everything that anyone might want out of a cloud photo storage service. And of course, to get all your pictures onto your next cloud server, you just have to use the next cloud mobile application, which will auto upload them if you so choose. Now, in terms of webmail and calendar, the webmail isn't a mail service on Nextcloud. You still need to add your email address to it. So you need an external email service to add. But the experience has been improved a lot. There are now quick actions, which are must faster to access from a message. You can preview mail content in the sidebar. There's a new account setup wizard that will auto detect your email settings when possible. And you can now reply to calendar invitations from the webmail itself. You can also view attachments without leaving the email app and without saving the file. You can set your out of office message and you can now use rich text signatures with images. As per the calendar, it now lets you duplicate events and has a way better appointment page to let you see who is available or not if you have multiple people on your next cloud server. This mail app was so far behind anything else that it was basically unusable, but fortunately that's no longer the case. I still prefer using a desktop client for email, but at least now you have an option to use something in your web browser. Now, if you plan to use Nextcloud for your family or for a small company, there are also some cool improvements here. Nextcloud Talk, the chat interface has been revamped entirely and it looks much, much better. Links now transform into cards with a rich view of what you shared. You can decide to select who will receive notifications for a video or audio call or a message to not disturb everyone in a group conversation. You can configure your work hours, enable a do not disturb option, and they also added message expiration, uploading documents straight from the chat bar, or the ability to create a poll in a conversation. Nextcloud Talk isn't just for business. You could absolutely use it for a close knit group of friends, a community you run, or even your family. And of course, Nextcloud still has all the apps it previously had. You have tasks to handle your to-do lists, you have deck to have a Kanban board. You have notes for note taking in Markdown with categories and favorites. You have news to read RSS feeds, forms to create complete surveys like what Google Forms can do. You have collectives for documentation and knowledge bases. You have multiple office suites like OnlyOffice or Collabora that let you edit documents online straight from Nextcloud and collaborate online on the same doc. You can personalize the colors and theme and logo reorganize the menus and sync everything to various mobile and desktop applications. It is just super versatile and really, really easy to use and to extend. Installing applications takes just a few clicks from the web interface, all the settings are in the same place, and it syncs really well with iPhones or with Android devices with DAVX 5, which is a small and free app to get your calendars, contacts, and tasks over to your phone. 
You can even create automations with Flow to automatically convert files into other formats when they land in a specific folder or getting notifications based on certain file tags. And if you use Linux as your desktop, you have a bunch of applications that can link to your next cloud server, like IOTAS for note-taking or Endeavor for tasks. If you want to move to Nextcloud and start ditching Google or Apple services, it's relatively easy. First, you can find an online provider that offers Nextcloud accounts as a service, including some with free plans. I left a link in the description if you want to check some of these out. Of course, your free storage will be limited here because no one can provide tens of gigs for free unless they're at the scale of Microsoft, Google or Apple and you're trusting another company with your data again. Which, I mean, if you want to leave Apple or Google, you might as well not put your data in the hands of yet another company, right? So if that's not your jam, self-hosting is quite simple. If you have a small PC or Raspberry Pi, there are plenty of tutorials online and on YouTube. And if you don't want to bother with running a server at home, any decent VPS provider will let you install Nextcloud in a few clicks. I would recommend using the Snap package as it's a one command line install and it auto updates perfectly. It's super stable and it just works. I hate to admit it, but my own Nextcloud server, which is hosted on Linode, runs with the Snap version of Nextcloud. They only update it when they're certain there are no issues whatsoever that could impact current users, and it's just been extremely stable since I installed it. I've been using it for years now, and it just runs smoothly. It auto-updates, I just never have to do any maintenance at all. And once you have your server running, there's a desktop client for Linux, Windows and Mac OS to let you sync files automatically and auto-upload them. You can set up your Nextcloud account on Linux with GNOME or KDE's online accounts to get your calendars, contacts and storage immediately synced and configured. And of course, you can download the mobile apps to auto-upload your pictures, access your notes, your files and whatever else. So if you're uncomfortable with leaving all your files, your photos, your tasks and your data in the hands of giant tech companies, but if Nextcloud always felt like it was lacking a few features, I think it's time you gave it another shot. Nextcloud Hub 3 is really where it's at and I think it can replace everything nowadays. Just like today's sponsor can replace your current computer. Tuxedo is a company based in Germany and they ship laptops and desktops worldwide with Linux pre-installed on them. And the simple reason why you would want that instead of buying any old Windows device and trying to slap Linux on it is because Tuxedo chooses the hardware to be compatible with Linux, which means that you can just install your distro and it runs. Plus, they have a big range of devices that should cover every price point and every need from super small affordable laptops to giant desktop tower workstations or gaming laptops or gaming desktops or ultrabooks, you name it. You can open the vast majority of their devices and upgrade them or repair them and you can customize them with a bunch of options, including your own custom keyboard layout on your laptop, your own super key to have, for example, a Tux logo or just the word super, or you can have your own logo on the lid of your laptop if you prefer, or no logo at all if you don't want a branded machine. So if you need a new device and you want to run Linux on it and you want to support Linux's development on hardware, check out the link in the description below and get yourself a tuxedo device. They are really, really good. So thanks everyone for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't hesitate to like, to subscribe, to turn on notifications, to write a comment. And if you didn't like it, the dislike button still works, I guess. And there's a comment section below to tell me why the video sucked. And if you really enjoy what I'm doing here, well, there's a super thanks button underneath the video. There's a PayPal link in the description. And you can also join my Patreon subscribers and YouTube members. Both get access to a weekly podcast and the right to vote on the next topics that I'll cover. So thanks everyone for watching and I guess you'll see me in the next one. Bye!